So I'm here with Graham and Alex McDonald. Which one's Graham? Which one's Alex? <laughs> That's Honey Bee. Uh, we're standing in front of your vineyard. You got 15 acres of uh, Cabernet here in a place that's called Tokalan. You can't necessarily call it Tokalan, but we'll get into that conversation <laughs> at another point. That's but you, more than one video. Worth yeah, <laughs> but we've got an alluvial fan behind us in the distance, and we were talking about how we have two vineyards here, really side by side, that are totally different to the eye, even though they are literally a stone's throw. So explain what's going on here and, and how you could be so close to something yet so different at the same time. Yeah, so uh, the best example is visually, which is my grandfather planted the walnut trees on both sides of this road 30 years ago. And you can see there's like a 10 foot difference uh, in the trees on the, on the right versus the left. And that's because- Planted know, at the same time, same trees, everything. Yep. Yeah, and yep. so as you go across the road, there's less gravel. And so that's what's causing these trees to be happier than the trees on our side. And uh, the source of that gravel is the Tokwon alluvial fan, which is this watershed here behind us, which is uh, geologically very complex. And you can see because there's different plants and trees growing on all these different sections, which are growing in different geologies that were pushed up from uh, the bottom of the earth. It's, and the reason for that is the Napa Fault runs right through the, the hillside. So that's why you're getting all these interesting uh, geologic complexities. And then over thousands of years, this, the erosion from the stream has deposited gravel and alluvial all under our feet, all throughout the vineyards. And so Tokalon is, uh, is famous as an important because of this distribution of gravel across the uh, across a wide expanse of area. Sort of the mystical part of vineyard management is geology, which we can't totally equate to quality, but it's fun to talk about because it's so unique. And uh, what I love is you see some of the very weathered uh, geological materials coming down the creek and they basically uh, fall apart and melt in your hand at that point where it's it's cool because you can, not terribly strong, but it's uh, it's incredible. Yeah. And so what was once a rock is now when you get the idea pulverized by what the soils look like when you get just a handful. Literally all gravel, no dirt. And that's the stuff that Cabernet loves. <laughs> yeah. You are standing next to vines planted in when? 1954. By? Our great grandparents. And this is a half acre parcel yeah. that is essentially some of the oldest Cabernet vines in Napa Valley. Tell us a little bit about this particular spot. So uh, these were planted by our uh, great grandparents with uh, uh, budwood from the original Tokalon Cabernet Sauvignon vines. and. Uh, these have been farmed, uh, dry farmed by our family uh, since, since the early 50s. And uh, it's a component of our personal wine. Uh, the only time we've ever bottled it separately is for birth years for, our, for my daughters. Uh, they each got five cases so that they can make spritzers out of them or whatever they're gonna do until <laughs> so they're old enough to appreciate it. But we're incredibly lucky because we get to farm vines that our great grandparents touched and have that connection to them. Yeah, and we never got to meet our great grandparents, but to have that ability is something that's really unique and special and something we very much cherish. And it's pretty obvious they don't use Roundup in this vineyard. You got <laughs> waist high uh, uh, growth here, which you're waiting to mow, yeah. and that's something that you do again with a half an acre and the two of you. You can do the work yourself, uh, but explain why you, you kind of let this go like this. Uh, so for this year, it's uh, to devigorate. We've had such a nice wet winter that. Um, I'm in no rush to mow everything down. I want the, the cover crop to suck up the water to intensify the, um, um, the vigor in the fruit so that the, that the plants don't, uh, don't overwork themselves. And these yeah. are dry, dry farm vines, still healthy after all this time. So that, that culture in the valley of maybe replanting every 25 years or so, you guys see it uh, sort of the other way. Yeah. No, yeah. For, we're, we're very focused on longevity. So whatever we can do to make sure that these vines can last as long as they possibly can, we're going to try to do it. And, uh, to be able to make wine from vineyards that are older than we are is a testament to our grandparents and great-grandparents hopefully farming the right way. So hopefully our kids and grandkids can say the same things 20, 30, 40 years from now.